what's the deal, guys? Um, it's like 515, 520. Uh, about to go ahead up Stunt Road. Go ahead and uh, do some filming of the sunrise, get an early start on the day. Okay, it took me like 15 minutes to find my keys in the morning. As usual, can't miss the sunrise. Come on, get some work in early today. We're off. I think the soundtrack for the morning is going to be a little bit of a boogie with the hoodie. Yeah, feel. Oh, I found a rubber band for my hair. This is going to be a great day already. Okay, uh, I'm going to get going. And hopefully uh, you'll see some cool shit. Flow up in a different bag now, baby. When I pick it up, you gon' put that eyes down. Tell them you don't give a fuck, baby. So I haven't missed sunrise yet. Uh, like another five minutes and it's gonna be a full-on sunrise. Hopefully I can get to the trail to start hiking. Um, in the next minute or two. Just got here, don't know if you can see behind me, but it is beautiful. Gonna go ahead and switch to some B-roll with my 70 to 200, AKA the long lens, and my D750 starting. A couple days ago, I came up here to go explore the uh, abandoned radio tower. And unfortunately, they now hire security to watch it. So that didn't happen. But uh, we're headed to a spot that's maybe a quarter mile, half mile, um, direct line of sight from the tower. So I might fly it. Almost to the top. It is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Marvelous. Fantastic. Don't know why I'm complimenting the sunset like our current president, but I think it's working for the beauty. We are at the top. nice. Not sure if I want to fly or not because of how gusty the wind is, but I might just set the tripod up and take some dope. It's no footage from that instead. It's pretty windy and yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't feel like flying. It's weird. hike to the top of a little ridge um, it looks like there's like another trail that's going a little bit downhill I thought I might as well get some cool footage uh, and see what's up over there continued hiking found there was like a flat spot on the top of the mountain you guys are gonna really quickly find out that I have terrible anxiety when it comes to shit that involves like heights and falling and I have no clue but I'm here, and it's really pretty. Okay, I just got off the phone with my buddy Oshkan. He owns a company that leases out sailboats to people that want to go sailing for a day. Um, I'm not going to give it all away, but it looks like we're going to be doing something regarding that on Friday. Potentially some models. No bottles. What, maybe bottles. Who knows? Friday is going to be lit AF. So I'm back home. I'm finishing up a coffee. And right now, I want to go over some of the camera gear that I use to create the vlog and to create some of the content that you guys might see on my Instagram. So we're going to go ahead and get into that now. I'm going to go ahead and cover each piece of gear and a moment or two about why I decided to make the purchase. This was the first camera body I bought um, in making my return to Nikon, also switching to full frame and going back from a mirrorless camera to a DSLR. Video quality on this thing is really good. You're looking at video similar to that of a 5D Mark III, um, if not maybe a little bit better in low light. Uh, the classic Nikon F mount, you can fit a ton of glass for it. Although Nikon glass isn't necessarily known for being used in video, you can totally use it. One of the things I absolutely love about the D750 is the fact that it's got the dual card slots on it. Um, for me, who shoots both video and photo, it's great. I have all my photos written to one card, my video written to the other. It makes my workflow 
so much easier just being able to know that everything on one of the cards is video and one's photo makes backup working just it just everything's easy currently attached to it i have the 70 to 200 version 2. Uh, this is kind of a decisive lens some photographers don't like the fact that it doesn't reproduce as large as the previous version um, i absolutely love this lens it's tack sharp i really don't do a ton of portraits so it's not going to affect me much whatsoever this isn't really a full review on the lens um, i'm just kind of touching on some of the gear i use but i absolutely love this lens it's tack sharp built like a tank no regrets on buying it whatsoever next is my 24 to 70 28G. This is the older version of the lens. Ironically enough, Nikon still makes this as a cheaper alternative to their newer 24-70 VR. This lens is actually sharper than the newer lens because it doesn't have that moving element for the VR aspect of it. So um, I got a great deal on this lens. Like all my other gear, I bought this used. This lens basically gives me um, the equivalent of having a micro four-thirds camera with a 12 to 35 1.4 so you can't really compare the two um, great subject isolation at close focusing distances wonderfully smooth bokeh and just an all-around great lens built like a tank as well and i love the hood design how it protects the front of the barrel as it extends Now to talk a little bit about my wide angle primes. I was gonna make a video talking about why I chose to get two prime ultra wides instead of a ultra wide zoom, but I thought that it wasn't as good of a video at the time. I'm definitely gonna re-record it and make it one of the vlogs. The Rokinon 14 millimeter 2.8, fantastic lens, great value, got on Amazon for $100 off. This lens cost me under $300 and it packs a ton of punch. For that I don't really have any issues manually focusing it um, pretty much everything is in focus with the lens and I'm usually shooting it at f4 or higher I can't complain especially under $300 the next lens I picked up was the Nikon 20 millimeter 1.8 G now I couldn't decide between this and the Sigma 21.4 ultimately I went with the 2018 because I could use neutral density filters and it's going to be a little bit more of a style for video whereas the extra um, stop a light or a quarter of a stop a light I couldn't justify the size of the weight or the price the next piece of gear that I have is a GoPro Hero 5 Black Edition I bought this the day it came out I don't necessarily regret buying it although for an action camera it is pretty expensive in retrospect, I probably would have bought the Poe Productions 19mm lens and a uh, Yi 4K Plus action camera, being that I could have interchanged the lenses, um, although that would have required me to have an external waterproof housing and a couple other things. The software that is on it does allow you to do a lot of stuff in regards to time lapse, long exposure, nighttime uh, cinematography whatnot and uh it's something that i definitely am looking forward to utilizing while i am traveling um you know i got an extra waterproof case and a bunch of accessories for this so i'm really excited about this whatever you do though don't get a gimbal for your gopro if you're wondering why watch the last video i'll link it somewhere here or there the next piece of equipment I'm going to be introducing is all my DJI products, which is basically my Mavic Pro. Um, if you know anything about this drone, you know why I own it. It's the best small drone on the market. Uh, I am going to be doing a video about my camera settings as well as my controller settings uh, because once I got those dialed in, it made it a lot easier for me to get really dope footage with it. Also. I have the lens hood that I was able to buy. I, I got it uh, pre-order when it first came out. I'll do a review on it. I'll link it in the future down below. If you don't know anything about the Mavic Pro, it's a fantastic drone, really compact, foldable, up to 30 minutes of battery life, depending upon your flight conditions, and can shoot 4K. The lens is a 28 millimeter equivalent on it, and that's gonna bring us to the next piece of DJI equipment. 
Now, this is a DJI Osmo, and this isn't any DJI Osmo, it's a DJI Osmo Plus. The reason I chose this is that it has equivalent to a 22 to 70 uh, millimeter zoom lens. It shoots 4K footage at 60 megabits per second. It can shoot in a flat image profile. It's small, it's compact. On top of that, I couldn't decide if I wanted to get a video tripod to use with my DSLR or what I was gonna do on this upcoming trip. Having this camera gives me the ability to bring a photo tripod and still get smooth fluid panning shots um, up or down without the use of my DSLR. And because it has a built-in zoom lens on it, I can capture most things that I wanna capture. Uh, battery life on it is so-so. Uh, definitely the new updates have increased the battery life. And I've also recently picked up an extended battery for it. <clears throat> and I'll review that in the future as well. One of the things I like about both of the DJI products is I can calibrate the picture profile on this sensor almost identical to what it is on my Mavic. So in post-production, I can use one LUT or I can use um, similar uh, layers to go ahead and grade the footage and make it look really nice. The next pieces of equipment, which is actually probably my most used piece of gear for my vlog, is this. It's a OnePlus 3T in the 128 gigabyte configuration. If you don't know anything about OnePlus, um, it is a smaller cell phone company that is owned and operated by Oppo. What you do want to know is that this runs nearly stock Android 7.0 with Google Assistant, has a 16 megapixel camera, 3400 milliamp hour battery, uh, a Snapdragon 821 processor, and it supports their dash charging, which will take you from zero to a fully charged battery in under two hours. Or if you are at like 20% battery, you can add 50% battery life, which is almost a day of use in under 35 or 40 minutes. Um, I use this camera for most of my vlog. I'm super happy with it. Uh, one thing I don't like is I've actually dented it already, but I have a warranty on it, so yeah. I might get this thing exchanged before I go to Thailand. Probably not. Um, I have the one-year manufacturer warranty on top of two years of accidental coverage. Overall, I ended up spending about 500 bucks for this phone, and it, I'm expecting it to last me about two years. Basically, 20 bucks a month um, you know, over, over the next two years in regards to overall cost, and for that, I'm pretty satisfied. Next piece of gear that I have, which I'm actually not using to record this video, is the Rode VideoMic Pro. Uh, this is the newer bottle with the Rikolite um, shock mount for it. Uh, it's the mount that every, or it's the microphone that everybody uses. I need to get a dead cat before I go to Thailand for it, as I am going to be on boats or out on the water. Um, I might pick up a dead cat for it actually uh, this week before I go hit the water on Friday. This is as ghetto it may, as it may look. Um, I broke it, super glued it, taped it, works great. It is the Amperage Marketing, uh, who is owned and operated by a friend of mine. Uh, it's the Amperage Marketing Mighty Mic. It's a really, really small shotgun microphone that is perfect for my DJI Osmo Plus. It's really small, great directional. It'll work on your cell phone as well. Uh, if you have an iPhone, there's an application so that you can go ahead and uh, listen to it uh, or listen to what it, uh, you're hearing in real time. Um, if you're not doing that, you can go ahead and record on this and then plug in your headphones and listen to the playback on it. Fantastic piece of kit. I think these are like 70 bucks or something around there. Um, sound quality wise, it's obviously not what this is. I'm going to be comparing it to another shotgun mic that I have coming this week uh, from another company. Um, and uh, you know, I'll let you guys go ahead and watch that video when it's finished with a link somewhere down here, probably. These are two video lights. This one is made by Young Yuno, and this one is made by Newer or Newer. This one is small. It's compact. It's great. I've had issues with the battery drain on it, to be completely honest with you. Um, although the size, the weight as a package. Um, you really can't beat it. I did a review on this light and I'll go ahead and I will link this down below. The next two pieces of gear I have 
aren't necessarily considered essential to the process of creating visual content, but to me, I find them uh, necessary. Um, you don't have to get a memory card wallet. I like Think Tank products. This is a Think Tank product. But memory, quality memory. The reason I say quality memory is because sometimes it can wear out. Uh, for example, these Lexar cards, that the professional ones, have a lifetime warranty on the card. Uh, after inserting them and uh, you know taking them in and out of your laptop or digital camera, hundreds of times they break. You send them back, they send you new ones. I'm taking care of this this afternoon, actually. Um, so uh, I like Lexar uh, SD cards because they do have the lifetime warranty if you get the professional series and they will honor that. I emailed them, they got back to me like within a day, hey, send them back to us and we'll send you new ones. The next piece of kit is the Dell XPS 15. This is last generation, the 9550. It has the Intel Core i7 6700HQ, which is the, the quad core um, mobile processor. It was the top of the line for the last one uh, prior to KV Lake. Uh, it's got an NVIDIA 960M graphics card with uh, two gigabytes of DDR5 uh, memory or video, or video RAM. Uh, I recently upgraded it as well to 32 gig, uh, gigabytes of Corsair Sport memory. It, whatever it is, it's higher. It's not only higher clock speed uh, RAM that I uh, updated it with, but it's actually um, faster RAM, I guess, uh, in regards to the, the read and write speeds on it. Um, it was like 280 bucks for 32 gigabytes of uh, the Sodium RAM. Uh, super easy to install. I made a DIY video about it. I'm in the process of doing that, and I'll link that somewhere else again. This model that I bought, um, I opted for the Windows edition, meaning it came with the NVMe uh, SSD, NVMe? no, PCIe SSD, and um, the larger battery. Also, because I got through the Windows Store, I opted for a two-year accidental coverage warranty um, for the device, and... Uh, yeah, I've spilled stuff on it and it's been great so far. Um, and it's probably gonna be needing a replacement after Thailand. Uh, the One of the charging ports on it looks like it's about to wear out. Um, right now it's fine. If I have issues with it, um, you know, I'll take care of it then. But uh, yeah, so I love this laptop. It has been fantastic. It is a great alternative to a MacBook Pro if you're a Windows user like myself. The Windows edition does, uh, it comes with a, a, sub, a couple of different things standard, but if you go to the Microsoft Store and get it, uh, it'll come with the 512 gigabyte PCIe uh, hard drive, the 4K Infinity Edge display, which has a fantastic um, RGB uh, color reproduction ratio. I absolutely love it. It's great for editing videos on. It's also a 4K touchscreen. I use the touchscreen a ton. I had this debate with one of my old roommates. I use the touchscreen all the time when my hands are messier, when I'm working on something, because the glass is so much easier to clean off than the keyboard. So if I'm cooking or I, you know, my hands are dirty, I will use the touchscreen because it's easier to clean and I don't have to worry about it like the keyboard. Um, so I do that all the time. And then a little travel hack for all of you digital nomads out there that are on the go and creative. Now, I'm calling this out right now. I haven't seen anyone else on YouTube do this yet. Hey, what's up, Uncle Jamie? Okay. Um, if you have to have a dongle or if you need to have more ports on something because you have a MacBook Pro or something along those lines, uh, I went ahead and Velcroed my port to the side of my laptop so that when I'm working, this isn't flopping around. I can just go ahead and plug that into my USB-C port and I am golden. So um, thank you guys for checking out this video. Uh, 